Recently, Cloudflare has open sourced Pingora, a Rust library for writing network components like custom load balancers, proxies, caches, and even more. They replaced Nginx as a proxy uh, with a proxy built on Pingora, and that is serving 1 trillion requests per day. So this must be something great. To understand this transition, first we must understand a little bit about how Nginx works. Nginx runs on a multi-process architecture, which means there are multiple processes and incoming requests are given to one of these processes to be worked upon. This is the fundamental architecture of Nginx and this structure ultimately caused Cloudflare most of their problems, but let's not go into that right now, we will get to that. Let's see some peculiarities of this architecture. First of all, each of these processes runs an event loop. I do not want to go much into what an event loop is, but this is a dumbed down version. These processes waits for events and when it gets one, it processes that events and when it is done processing, it comes back and waits for more events. The nice thing is, let's say it blocks on something like it is doing some network call or something like that, it blocks on it, it goes back to the process pool to wait for incoming events. So this is executing in a non-blocking manner. Now in the context of Nginx, these events are the requests that it receives, the network request it receives to handle. There are some more complexities that Nginx has, including more threads in the processes to handle some of the blocking tasks, but let's not go into that right now. Now in Nginx, due to the system call it uses, the requests are handed over to the processes in a last in first out manner. So there is a pool of processes waiting and this would kind of act like a stack. So there is no actual stack in the memory, but this would actually act like one. So the last process that has been added to this process pool would get the incoming requests. Now look at this. Let's say there is this process P1 and it is at the top of the stack. It is the last added one. And there is this request R1. So P1 gets to handle this request it goes and processes this request R1 and after it is done, it goes back to the pool and stays at the top. Before anything happens, it goes back to the pool. Now there is this request called R2 and since P1 is still at the top, it gets to handle it, but now it blocks on something. So it goes back and waits at the pool, but again, it lands on the top because it is the last added one. Then it also gets to handle this request R3. So you see, there is a skew. The process with more work comes back to the process pool more often and thus gets more work. So the request distribution will have a ladder because the processes with more work already is getting even more work. So some processes will have much more work than others. In the case of Cloudflare, this make things slower. This kind of architecture works best when the request handling is not very complex and it finishes up very quickly. In the case of Cloudflare, the request handling is somewhat complex and it might take some more time. So the assumption does not hold. What also happens is if some of the requests are slow, in an event loop, it might sometimes block the other requests being processed in that process too. And as I said before, some of the processes will have much more requests than others. They kind of found the solutions for above, although not very good ones. I told these problems to explain you that this process architecture of Nginx was not really suiting Cloudflare. Let's not go into the solutions, but let's talk about one more major problem they had. Because multiple separate processes handles the request, they do not share a lot between them. The processes do not share a lot between them. So let's say one of the processes who opens a connection with an external server, which Cloudflare would often do, the open connection might only be reused by requests being processed with this process only. The connection pool is per process. It's not shared among all the processes. So if P2, if there is any request in P2 and it wants to open a new connection or it wants to access the same example.com, it has to open a completely new connection and not reuse this one. This made things really slow for Cloudflare. There were other reasons too. They needed to add more custom features like retrying an external request with different headers, but Nginx didn't allow for that. Another issue was that Nginx is written in C, which is inherently memory unsafe. So they were scared of using it. With all this context, they chose to build their 
own proxy or actually a full networking library. They chose Rust as the language because of its memory safety. And let's be frank, who doesn't love Rust nowadays? They avoided using any off the shelf replacement for Nginx since they needed more custom control. For example, they wanted to support HTTP status codes even outside the standard ones because of the large breadth of use cases they see across the internet. They even implemented their own HTTP server in Rust. Another major decision they took was not to use the multi-process architecture that Nginx uses since it was the root of all their problems. Now they have moved to a multi-threading approach in uh, Pingora. So with multiple threads, they can share the same connection pool. So if one request in one thread has opened a TCP connection to another server, any thread can reuse that connection to reach to that server. They also implemented work stealing for these threads and not the last in first out behavior like Nginx. I won't discuss about work stealing in this video, but I have discussed about it in my video about go routines. So you can check that video out from the description. The most interesting choice according to me is creating and releasing Pingora as a Rust library and not as a complete Nginx replacement in itself. It allows anyone to write custom Rust code and implement their own load balancers, proxies, gateways, and things like that. In Nginx, you could write custom Lua code uh, and implement your custom features, but Lua would be really slow since it would need to interact with the C code. So it would need to copy objects, a lot of objects from one place of the memory to the other so that the Lua code can access it. In the case of Pingora, it's just a Rust library, so any access is direct. But now, how fast and efficient is Pingora? It shows about 80 millisecond reduction in the time to first byte in the 95th percentile. They reduce the number of new connections being opened by two thirds. It runs with 70% less CPU and 67% less memory. Well, they claim it's much safer since it runs on Rust and the crashes are extremely rare. So it's all good things to hear. And they have open source Pingora too, so that you can try and take a look and build things on top of it. But let me tell you, uh, Nginx would probably still be good for vast majority of use cases. You don't need to jump right into Pingora and write up your own custom Rust code if you don't need it. Because if Nginx is working quite fine for you, it's good. But overall, really an interesting engineering story. And there would be a lot of cool things built on top of Pingora as well, I think. I tried out some of the examples in the Pangora repo. It's pretty great to get started and at least creating the uh, basic stuff is quite simple. So that's it for today. Uh, do leave a like on the video and subscribe if you want more engineering videos like this. See you in the next one.